Section 4.2, Parabolas and their Applications. In this section, uh, we'll present the general characteristics of a quadratic function, learn how to find key features of the graph of a quadratic function, including its intercepts, its vertex, its axis of symmetry. We'll talk about how to sketch the graph of a quadratic function from standard or from vertex form. We'll talk about how to find the equation of a quadratic function from its graph or from other given information. We'll see a couple of applications of these concepts. So first, some general characteristics of a quadratic function. A quadratic function uh, is a function of the form f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c. And the graph of a quadratic function is a u-shaped curve called a parabola. So here's an example of a parabola. And we would say that this parabola opens up. All right, so this parabola opens up. Does it have any x-intercepts? Well, let's see, x-intercepts. I see an x-intercept over here and an x-intercept over here. So the x-intercepts, um, they're not exactly negative 1 and 5. I'm going to say they're approximately about negative 1.1 and approximately uh, 5.1. I'm a zero. Does it have a y-intercept? Oh, yeah, there's a y-intercept right there at zero, negative three. The vertex. The vertex is, in this case, it's the lowest point on the curve and is given by the ordered pair to negative five. The axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is this vertical line about which the curve is symmetric. So the axis of symmetry is given by the equation x equals 2 for this one. Where is the function increasing? Well, this is something we've already discussed. The function is increasing on the interval 2 to infinity and it's decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 2. What's the domain and range? Again, this is something we've discussed in the past. Uh, in this case, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. It goes all the way from the left to the right. And the range, uh, this one has a minimum value of negative 5 and continues on to positive infinity. Now, a couple things that I'd like for you to notice in particular, notice how the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing all involve that same value of x. And that's important because we, we're going to be we're going to, need to use that information later on when we're sketching the function ourselves. All right, so here's another example, uh, another parabola. In this case, the parabola opens down. All right, do we have any x-intercepts? None. All right, so a quadratic function does not have to have any x-intercepts. Does it have a y-intercept? Well, yes, it does. Uh, it appears to be at 0, negative 5. Vertex. The vertex appears to be at negative 4, negative 1. Axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 4. Where is the function increasing? And this function is increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 4. And it's decreasing on the interval negative 4 to infinity. The domain, again, is negative infinity to infinity, and the range would be negative infinity to negative 1 bracket. All right, so I just wanted to show a couple of examples of what they looked like and what were these important features. Now, generally speaking, what we're going to want to do is take a function that's given to us and be able to find all this information and sketch the function on our own. All right, so key features. First, how do we find intercepts? 
To find the y-intercept, you evaluate f of 0, and this is true for any function. To find x-intercepts, you solve f of x equals 0, and again, this is true for any function. All right, so let's find the y-intercept. So f of 0, we're given the function f of x is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Then f of 0 would be 2 by 0 squared minus 5 by 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. So then the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Finding x-intercepts, we set the function equal to 0. All right, so then x would equal, I'm just going to use the quadratic formula here, although I think this one factors, but I'm going to go straight to the quadratic formula. Opposite of negative 5 plus or minus square root, negative 5 square minus 4 by 2 by negative 3 over 2 by 2. So that's 5 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, that would be 25 plus 24, that would be 49 under the radical, over 4. So that's 5 plus or minus 7 over 4. Let's see, 5 minus 7 is negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. 5 plus 7 is 12 over 4, which is 3. So the x-intercepts are negative 1 half, 0, and 3, 0. All right, so that's how we can find intercepts. How do we find the vertex and axis of symmetry? Well, if we have a quadratic function in the form f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, the x-coordinate of the vertex is given by x sub v is equal to negative b over 2a. We won't go into how this, where this is derived from, but let's just accept it. And then to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we take the x-coordinate and evaluate it in the function. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line passing through the vertex and is given by x is equal to x sub v. So let's determine the vertex and axis of symmetry of f of x is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. All right, so then the x-coordinate of the vertex is given by negative uh, let me draw, let me write this the same way as that we have it earlier. All right, negative, and then we have the b coefficient in the numerator, 2 times the a coefficient in the denominator. So two negatives, that's a positive, so 5 over 4, or 1.25. The y-coordinate of the vertex would be f of 5 fourths. So that would be 2 times 5 fourths square minus 5 times 5 fourths minus 3. So that would be 2 times 25 sixteenths minus uh, 5 times 5 fourths minus 3. So let's see, that would be 25 over 8 minus 25 over 4 minus 3. I'll move up here. Y coordinate of the vertex would then be, oh, we need a common denominator. I'll use 8 as the common denominator. 25 over 8 minus 50 over 8 minus 3 over 1 is 24 over 8. So that's negative 20, that's 25, negative 25 minus 24 is uh, negative 49 over 8. So then the vertex is 5 fourths, negative 49 eighths. And then the axis of symmetry, I'll abbreviate that AOS, is the equation x equals 5 fourths. All right, so let's put some of those ideas together. We want to find the intercepts, vertex, axis of symmetry, and determine the concavity of f of x is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 14. And then we're going to use all that information to sketch the graph of the function. All right, so first, we look at the lead coefficient. 
the lead coefficient in this case is 1. And so I'm going to immediately say, uh, here's what I know, and I, I haven't mentioned earlier in this presentation, but here's what we know. If the a coefficient is positive, then the parabola opens up. If the a coefficient is negative, the parabola opens down. All right, so then this one I know is going to open up. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Let's find intercepts. The y-intercept, let's see, f of 0 would be 0 squared minus 9 times 0 plus 14. That would be 14, so 0, 14. Let's find any x-intercepts. So x squared minus 9x plus 14 equals 0. Now, I know that this one factors, and it factors as x minus 2 by x minus 7. Now, if it doesn't factor, you apply the quadratic formula, or you apply the quadratic formula right away. It's up to you. x equals 2, x equals 7. So then I have 2, 0 and 7, 0. All right, so I have intercepts, axis of symmetry, and vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex would be given by negative, and we have a negative 9 over 2 times 1. Two negatives is a positive, so that's 9 halves. The y-coordinate of the vertex would be f of 9 halves, which would be 9 halves square minus 9 times 9 halves plus 14. Now we can go through all this arithmetic, but if we have a calculator, why don't we use the calculator and see what it does. So we have 9 halves square minus 9 times 9 halves plus 14 and we get negative 6.25. Now if you want, um, you can certainly get a fraction out of that by hitting math, enter, enter, negative 25 fourths. So just be consistent with whatever you, you use. So if you use decimals, use decimals for both co uh, both coordinates. If you use fractions, use fractions. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use decimals in this case. So then the vertex is 4.5, negative 6.25, and the axis of symmetry is x equals 4.5. All right, so I've got this grid, and it may, might not have been the best grid, but let's work with it. All right, so let's see. We have, I, I like to go with the vertex first. So I'm going to plot 4.5, negative 6.25, so that's about here. Now, my x-intercepts are at 2, 0, and 7, 0. Now, here's a good check is your vertex halfway between your x-intercepts. So let's see, how would I get from the vert, from the x-intercept to the vertex, at least the x-coordinate of the vertex? So let's see, that's one, two, and a half units. One, two, and a half units. Okay, so the vertex is halfway between, so that's good. Y-intercept. 0, 14. So let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13. 0, 14 is about here. Now, let me use the axis of symmetry. So my axis of symmetry is right here, that x equals 4.5. And I have 4.5 units from the y-intercept to the axis of symmetry. So I'm going to go 4.5 units on the other side of the axis of symmetry, and so I have the point 9 
14 as well. So that point is 9, 14. And it's a point that's symmetric to the y-intercept. And I'm going to use that information to sketch the function. I lost my y-intercept. I'm sorry, I lost my vertex. All right, so get that u-shape. So there's a rough sketch of the function just using intercepts, vertex, and an additional point using the axis of symmetry. All right, here's another example. Let's do the same thing with it. Our function is negative 3x squared minus 7x plus 6. All right, we know it opens down since our a coefficient is negative. Specifically, it's negative 3. The y-intercept, f of 0 would be negative 3 by 0 squared minus 7 by 0 plus 6, which is 0. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. It's 6. So then my y-intercept is 0, 6. x-intercepts. Uh, let's see. Uh, negative 3x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. Uh, I'm not sure if that one factors. I'm going to use the quadratic formula here. So let's see. x would equal... 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times negative 3, so that's going to end up being a plus, plus 12 times 6 is 72 over 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So that's 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 over negative 6, and so that's 7 plus or minus 11 over negative 6. So it did turn out that it, uh, that it could have factored. Um, if, in general, if you have a perfect square under the radical, you could have factored the trinomial. All right, so let's see. 7 minus 11 is negative 4 over negative 6. So x is negative 2 thirds. I'm sorry, that would be a positive 2 thirds. And 7 plus 11 is 18 over negative 6 is negative 3. So then my x-intercepts are negative 3, 0, and 2 thirds, 0. All right, let's find the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative we have a negative 7 over 2 times a negative 3. 1, 2, 3 negative, so that's a negative. 7 sixths. And then my function, the y-coordinate of the vertex, would be negative 3 by negative 7 sixths squared minus 7 by negative 7 sixths plus 6. And I'm going to use a calculator here for that. Negative 3 by negative 7 over 6 quantity square. Oh, wrong button. Sorry about that minus 7 by negative 7 over 6 plus 6. I get this decimal number, so 10.08. And I guess I should, I should go, well, what's negative 7 over 6? 1.17. All right, so then my vertex is approximately negative 1.17, I'm a 10.08, and we could find decimal values for each, uh, I'm sorry, exact fractions for those, but let's just use these approximations. All right, so let's see what we have here. Uh, vertex, negative 1.17, 10, negative 10.08, so that's about oh, here somewhere. x-intercepts at negative 3, 0 and 2 thirds, 0. So now let's just kind of check to get to 
Let's, let's check that symmetry. Is my axis of symmetry, is my vertex midway between those x-intercepts? And that looks pretty good. It's almost two units in either direction. All right, and we also have 0, 6. And I realized an error. I plotted the point negative 1.17, 10, negative 10.08, and it should have been positive. So sorry about that. That should be up here. All right, and now we have 0, 6. And let's see, we go negative negative 1 and 1, 6, so we have to go another 1 and 1, 6, so it's about here. We have another point on the curve. That's what negative 2 and 2, 6, negative 2 and 1, 3rd. So this point right there is negative 2 and 1, 3rd, so that's what negative uh, 7 thirds, comma 6 is that point, and we can draw our parabola. from there. All right, one more of these. Now we have the function f of x is negative 4x squared plus 18x plus 1. Again, the parabola will open down since a is negative. Let's find the intercepts, the y-intercept f of 0 is negative 4 by 0 squared plus 18 by 0 plus 1, which is 1. So the y-intercept is 0, 1. Let's find the x-intercepts, if there are any. So we would have negative 4x squared plus 18x plus 1 equals 0. I'll apply the quadratic formula. x would equal negative 18 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 18 square is 324 minus 4 times negative 4 times 1, so that would end up being a plus 16 over 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So that's negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 340 over negative 8. I don't know why I wrote it 2 there. All right, now, if we just, now 340 is not a perfect square, so we're not going to get a nice square root out of this. So let's go ahead and just find approximate x-intercepts here. Let's clear that out. Uh, let's see, negative 18 minus the square root of 340, close the square root, close the numerator, divide by negative 8, 4.55 comma 0. All right, so we have uh, 4.55 comma 0, and let's do the addition now. Uh, negative 0 0.05 approximately. All right, let's find the vertex. So the x-coordinate of the vertex would be negative, and the b-coefficient is 18 over 2 times negative 4, so that would be positive. Uh, 18 over 8 is 2.25. We'll just use decimals here. All right, and the y-coordinate of the vertex would be negative 4 by 2.25 square plus 18 by 2.25 plus 1. Let's see, negative 4 by 2.25 square plus 18 by 2.25 plus 1 21.25. So then the vertex is 2.25, 21.25, and then the axis of symmetry is x equals 2.25. All right, so 
looking at this, looking at the numbers we have, I'm going to change my Y scale because I got to get 21.25 somewhere on here. So I'm going to change my Y scale to 2. So this will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and same thing down here, negative 2, negative 4, although I don't think we'll need too many of those. I'm going to leave the X scale alone. All right, so we have the vertex at 2.25 comma 21.25. So that would be about here, let's say. All right, my intercepts are at 4.55 comma 0, about here, and negative 0 0.05, 0, so near the origin. I have a y-intercept at 0, 1, so just a little bit away from that x-intercept, really. And so I'd have something similar at what, um, let's see, I have 2.25 to get to there. Think of your axis of symmetry. All right, that's 2.25 units, so I'd have to go 2.25 units on the other direction, so that would be a 4.5, so I've got this point right here, at 4.5 comma 1. All right, and then we have, we can draw the curve. All right, so there are a few examples of how we can sketch a quadratic function from the standard form, the AAX squared plus BX plus C form. There's also what's known as a vertex form. A quadratic function in the form f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k is written in the vertex form, and h, k are the coordinates of the vertex. Now what I want you to see from this is that it's just a transformation of the basic function f of x equals x squared. Transformation, did we move it to the left, to the right, up, down, did we flip it, did we scale it? All those ideas that we talked about back in chapter 3, we can apply now. So we're asked to find the intercepts, vertex, axis of symmetry, and determine the concavity. Now we have the function f of x is negative 5 by x plus 7 squared minus 2. All right, so the first thing I want to mention is this number that's being multiplied by that quantity square is the a coefficient. So we have a equal to negative 5, so the parabola opens down. Now, I know I found the intercepts in the past first, but let's find the vertex first because it's easier in this form. Vertex. Let's see. Think of the shifts. x plus 7 squared. Shift left 7. Minus 2. Shift down 2. Alright, so if we take our standard vertex our 0, 0, and we shift it left 7 and down 2. That's my new vertex. So that tells me then that the vertex is negative 7, negative 2. Axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 7. So it's very easy to find the vertex in this form. All right, let's find the y-intercept. f of 0 would be negative 5 by 0 plus 7 squared minus 2. So that's negative 5 by 7 squared minus 2. So that's negative 5 by 49 minus 2. So that's negative, well, let's see, 5 times 49 is 245 minus 2, and that's negative 247. 
So my y-intercept then is 0, negative 247. That's not fun. All right, what about x-intercepts? I know that there's none. I don't even have to do any work, and I know that there's no x-intercepts. How do I know that? Well, think about where the vertex is. Negative 7, negative 2, and that the parabola opens down. So, if we just sort of think roughly, negative 7, negative 2 is here. That's the vertex. The parabola opens down. No x-intercepts. I don't have to do any work. I just have to sort of think about it conceptually, and I know that that's going to happen. All right, so now we want to get a sketch of this. So maybe it might be helpful to find, you know, I don't want to, I don't really want to plot 0, negative 247. I can if I want to. Um, but I'm going to plot a couple of points that are closer to the vertex. All right, so let's plot negative 7, negative 2. And let's go, and remember that if that's the vertex, then my axis of symmetry is right there at x equals negative 7. And let's just find some other point on the curve. Um, a little bit out of space here. So let's just evaluate, how about f of negative 6? f of negative 6 would be negative 5 by negative 6 plus 7 square minus 2. And so let's see, that would be negative 5 by 1 square minus 2. So that would be negative 5 minus 2, which is negative 7. So then I have the point negative 6, negative 7. And I'll plot that point, negative 6, negative 7. And then by symmetry, I have negative 8, negative 7 as well. They're both one unit from the axis of symmetry, and there's a rough sketch of the curve um, without the y-intercept, which is well beyond um, the other important information. All right, let's look at one more of those. Uh, f of x is 4 times x minus 3 squared minus 1. All right, so again, the parabola opens up. Vertex, right 3, down 1. Right 3, down 1, the vertex is 3, negative 1. Axis of symmetry, x equals 3. Intercepts, the y-intercept would be 4, well, I should say f of 0. f of 0 would be 4 times 0 minus 3 square minus 1. So that would be 4 by negative 3 square minus 1. That would be 4 by 9 minus 1. That's 36, 35. So we have 0, 35. x-intercept. Uh, Vertex is at 3, negative 1, and it opens up. It will have intercepts. So 4 by x minus 3 squared minus 1 is 0, adding 1. 4 by x minus 3 squared is 1, dividing by 4. x minus 3 squared is 1 fourth. Square root property. x minus 3 is plus or minus. The square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. So then x would equal 3 plus or minus 1 half. So that's nice. 3 minus 1 half, uh, that would be 2.5 comma 0. 3 plus 1 half, that would be 3.5 comma 0. All right, so let's, let's plot this. I have the vertex at 3, negative 1. I have x-intercepts at 2.5 and 3.5. And then I have a y-intercept at 0, 35. So that's way up here somewhere. Um, 20, 35, it might be like, that might be 30, 0, 35 on this scale. All right, so let's use, let's find another point that's closer to the function. How about, um, what's f of 1? f of 1 
would be 4 by 1 minus 3 squared minus 1. That would be 4 by 4 minus 1. That would be 16 minus 1 is 15. So 1, 15, that's a little bit closer. That might be about here. There's 1, 15. And then remembering the axis of symmetry, we would have 5, 15. All right, so let's draw the curve. All right, so there's the graph of the function. All right, so now let's find the equation of a quadratic function. Now, it often depends on what information we're given, which form we want to use, but in general, uh, if we have a graph and we see a nice vertex, we're going to use the vertex form. And so I see the vertex here at negative 4, negative 1. So what I'm going to do is write the function in vertex form as f of x, I get, you could use y if you wanted to, f of x is equal to a by x minus negative 4 plus negative 1. Let's clean that up a little bit. f of x is a by x plus 4 minus 1. Oh, and don't forget the square. My mistake, don't forget the square. And if you think of the shift, if you think about what we learned back in chapter 3, this should seem correct. This has been shifted left, 4, down 1. All right, now we use another point on the curve. I see that the curve passes through 0, negative 5. So I'm using now 0, negative 5 to determine A. So then negative 5 would equal a by 0 plus 4 square minus 1. Negative 5 is a by 16 minus 1. Let's see, uh, add 1 to both sides. Negative 4 is equal to 16a and dividing through by 16, a is negative 1 fourth. And so then revising the function f of x is negative one-fourth by x plus four square minus one. And there's the function that models that graph. Find the equation of a quadratic function given that its graph contains the points one negative sixteen, negative two negative seven, and six nine. Now, we don't know that any of these points is the vertex, so we can't use that information. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a system of equations in three unknowns that we can use to solve for the a, b, and c of the standard function. So we're going to say that our function, or our equation, we'll just use the equation, we'll say y equals. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to start with that. Now, I know that if x is 1, y is negative 16. So using 1 16, 1 negative 16, that tells me then, and I'm going to change the order, I'm going to switch the sides here. That tells me that a times 1 square plus b times 1 plus c must equal negative 16 ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. Using negative 2, negative 7, that would give me a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c is equal to negative 7. And similarly for 6, 9, a times 6 squared plus b times 6 plus c is 9. All right, so now let's take these. This is now a, th a system of equations, and this is a 3 by 3 system. I know we didn't really study these in, a, in an earlier chapter, but the techniques we learned we're going to be able to use now. 
All right, so let's clean this up. 1 squared is 1, and 1 times a is a, plus b times 1 is b. a plus b plus c is negative 16. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4a minus 2b plus c is equal to negative 7. 6 squared is 36. 36a plus 6b is, uh, I'm sorry, plus c is equal to 9. So now this is a 3 by 3 system. Three equations, three unknowns. Now I'm going to use an elimination method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the entire second equation by negative 1. And what that'll do is that'll give me a negative c in particular, and it will then I'll be able to do some eliminations. All right, so now this gives me a plus b plus c is negative 16. Negative 4a minus uh, plus 2b minus c is equal to 7. 36a plus 6b plus c is 9. All right, so now I'm going to add equations 1 and 2 together. So let me take equation 1 and equation 2 and add them together. That would yield negative 3a plus 3b is negative 16 plus 7 is negative 9. I'm going to add together equations 2 and 3. That gives me 32a plus 8b is equal to 16. And now I have a 2 by 2 system that's relatively easy to solve. We're going to do another elimination. I'm going to multiply the first equation by 8 and the second equation by negative 3 and that will give me an elimination on B yielding negative 24A plus 24b is equal to negative 72. And multiplying the second equation by negative 3 gives negative 96a minus 24b equals negative 48. Now we're adding these two equations together. That gives us that elimination on b. Negative 24 and negative 96a combine to negative 120a. We have the elimination on b, and let's see the right hand side, negative 72, negative 48, negative 120. Dividing through by negative 120, we find that a is 1. All right, so a is 1. Now that we know the value for a, we can substitute back and solve for b. Uh, let's use the fact that negative 3a plus 3b is negative 9. So negative 3 times 1 plus 3b is negative 9. So that's negative 3 plus 3b is negative 9. Adding 3 to both sides, 3b is negative 6. Dividing through by 3, b is negative 2. So we have a is, neg a is 1, b is negative 2. And finally, let's use the fact that a plus b plus c is negative 16. So then 1 plus negative 2 plus c is negative 16. Uh, negative 1 plus c is negative 16. Adding 1, c is negative 15. So find the equation. The equation is y equals ax squared, so 1 x squared minus 2x minus 15, and we would usually not write that 1 in front of the x squared. All right, so that's how we can find a quadratic model using three points.
The total number of points per season scored by Larry Bird can be approximated by n of x equals negative 20.33x squared plus 175.74x plus 1638.12 where x is the number of years since 1979. Find the vertex of the function and interpret its meaning as it applies to this problem. All right, finding the vertex, well, that's easy. Vertex, find, let's find the x-coordinate. That would be negative. Let's see, we'd have a 175.74 over 2 times negative 20.33. Now, I know it's going to be positive. Two negatives is a positive. So let's see, 175.74. 0.74, and I need to divide that by, now I've got to do that multiplication in the denominator, so parentheses 2 times 20.33. So 4.32. Alright, so 4.32. Now, what is n of 4.32? That would be negative 20.33 by 4.32 squared plus 175.74 by 4.32 plus 1638.12. All right, so negative 20.33 by 0.32 squared plus 175.74 by 4.32 plus 1638.12 is 2017, let's say 2018. All right, so 4.32, where x is the number of years since 1979. Now let's think about this. Quadratic function, the a coefficient is negative, the parabola opens down. All right, so what is this telling us? In, well, what year would that be? 4.32, so 1979 plus 4 is 1983. In 1983, Larry Bird scored um, his maximum number of points in a season. that maximum number of points was about 2018. All right, one more application. Kira and her three male friends have put together shows that are based on the popular Black Eyed Peas group. They use a local high school gym on the weekends that attracts many students and their friends from other surrounding schools. When they sell tickets at $6, their average attendance is $300. Kira has noticed that for each $2 increase in price, attendance to their performance decreases by 10 people. We're asked to write a revenue function that models this situation, and then what ticket price will yield the maximum revenue, and what is that maximum revenue? All right, so let's get a let's get an understanding of this. Now, the revenue, how much money we're taking in? Well, if we took the price and multiplied by the attendance, that would give us a revenue. All right, so let's say we have price by attendance. And that's going to give us the revenue. All right, so I'm going to kind of build a little table out of this. All right, so now when the price is $6, the attendance is $300, and the revenue then would be $1,800. All 
Now Kira notices that for each $2 increase in price, attendance drops 10 by 10. So if we increase it to $8, the attendance would be 290. And we do some multiplication here. 8 times 290 is 2,320. That seems nice, right? An increase of revenue. All right, well, what if we increase it to $10? Well, then the attendance would decrease to 280, and we'd get um, a revenue of 2,800. So I want you to notice something. Notice that that first change in revenue was, what, $520, but the second change in revenue is $480. So increasing the price didn't give us as much of an increase in revenue. All right, so let's see one more time here. Uh, let's increase the price to $12. What happens to the attendance? That would be 270. And 12 by 270 is 3240. And so that's an increase of only $440. All right, now we don't want to keep on doing this to find the maximum revenue. This is an algebra course. We want to use an algebraic technique. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say, let x represent the number of price increases. So then, this would mean x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3. If there's three price increases, the price is 6. But now what if we just had a general x? What's the price? Well, the price is increasing by $2 per increase. So then the, the new price would be 6 plus 2x. The attendance is decreasing by $10, um, by 10 people per increase in price. So then we started at 300 and we decreased it by 10, uh, by 10 people per increase. And so then the revenue would be 6 plus 2x by 300 minus 10x. All right, so first part the revenue function where x is the number of price increases, then our revenue function, I'll call it r of x, is 6 plus 2x by 300 minus 10x. Now let's use that FOIL concept to simplify this. We would have, what, 1800 uh, minus 60x plus 600x minus 20x squared. That's negative 20x squared plus 540x plus 1800. So there's another way to write the revenue function. I'm going to go with that one now. Okay, so there's the first part. Now it says, what ticket price will yield the maximum revenue? So notice that we have this quadratic function and it's opening down. So then the vertex would be the highest point on the curve, which would give us a maximum. Let's find the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex would be negative 540 over 2 by negative 20. So we have 540 over 40, which is 13.5. All right, and when we have 13.5, now remember, that's the number of increases in price. And what's the maximum revenue? Well, r of 13.5 would be negative 20 by 13.5 squared plus 540 by 13.5 plus 1800, and let me just use a calculator here, negative 20 by 13.5 squared plus 540 by 13.5 
plus 1800, right? Was that the function? Plus 540, yeah, okay. Which is 5445. All right, so now what is this telling us? 13.5 is the number of price increases. So then the new price would be 6 plus 2 times 13.5. 6 plus 2 times 13.5. $33. So, to maximize revenue, they should charge $33 per ticket. The maximum revenue will be $5,445. All right, that concludes the presenta presentation for section 4.2.